All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you five different ways. I'm going to try to keep it concise how I've been utilizing AI to, you know, further enhance my photo edits and kind of taking them to the next level. The tool that I'll be showing off in this is Luminar Neo. I've been using it for a while now, and it's actually been like the secret sauce to, you know, finalizing all of my images. That's the key word. I promise you this just won't be another like Luminar or AI video. I'm really going to show you guys tricks that I've been using over the past 15 years, my photo editing career that I used to do in Photoshop and it would take me forever. And I just use AI and it just makes it way easier. So we're gonna start off with the easy stuff, with the typical stuff that people kind of uh, already know about, about how I use it personally and kind of the tricks that I do to make it look even more natural to where like literally almost no people have ever noticed that I'm doing this stuff. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you like my biggest secret that I use that again, I used to do in Photoshop and now just through Luminar, I just easily do it. And it literally saves me hours of time. For all these photos, I literally just threw on uh, one of my Roadrunner presets and uh, that's literally all I did for these edits. So I'll put a link down in the description to those uh, Lightroom presets. But now this is how I first started to use Luminar uh, for sky replacement. Don't click off yet. I know this has been covered a million times. There's a couple of tricks that I do that uh, no, no one has ever really ever covered, but it's the way that I get it to look so uh, natural. You can see we got the little AI tab up here. So that means it's going to utilize the AI. So let's just click on that. You can see, I really like that one. Let's try this one. Hmm. I think I like this one more. Obviously you can see this looks incredibly fake right now so far. The magic is though, if we zoom in here, this used to like take hours to do guys in Photoshop. So obviously step one, we're just going to defocus it to match the bokeh on the backdrop here. This is the secret that I use. Again, no one talks about this. I don't know why no one has really covered this, but this is the magic sauce. The atmospheric haze. I've been using this trick for years. It's the number one reason why like on my Instagram, a lot of people will comment, was this on medium format? So anyways, we're gonna turn up the atmospheric haze. You can see just, just doing that, all of a sudden it looks real. So again, this is before, this is after. Also, excuse my pup, she's on day, I think we're on day eight after her, uh, she tore her ACL. So she had TPLO surgery, I think it's called. The knee she's laying right now has like 20 stitches in it right now. So she's a little bit out of it and sedated. But anyways, that atmospheric case is the golden trick to making the sky replacement look legit. Now, the other thing that I like to pay attention to is you can see the blues are a lot more cooler than the rest of the blues in the image. So I'm just gonna go to warm and I'm just gonna warm that up. There you go. So this is the before, that's an after. Now that's number one. Now let's go into number two. All right, so for the next fix, uh, I love using Luminar Neo a lot for my YouTube thumbnails. Obviously you guys could pertain this to product photography or just general stuff. Our shots a little bit, I can't tell if it's out of focus or if it's blurry or if I moved, if there's motion blur, I can't tell what happened there. But previously you would need totally different software to do this. Now Luminar Neo, you just do everything in here. So let's start with low here and let's see what we got. Okay, I feel like that fixed it a lot. You can see this is the before, that's the after. Let's go to middle. You can see a middle's kind of affecting the background a little bit. You don't really see it until you do the before and after, but I'll show you how I fix that. So that's definitely getting that fixed when it's more zoomed out. Now let's go to high. Okay, I think high is where it's at. So you see zoomed out again, this is gonna be a YouTube thumbnail. So I already cropped in heavily into the image. Imagine the image is this big, I'm like cropping into here. So we're already losing resolution and this is still holding up on everything. So again, here's the before and after, that's the before, that's the after, before, after. I personally, I don't even think it needs to be masked or anything like that, but you could go in and you could go into the mask, you do object select here. I'm just gonna click on the object there and I'm gonna click on parts of the GoPro here. And there we go. So now the sharpening effect is only being added to specifically the objects. And you can see already just that, just sharpening that, not the rest of the image is what's gonna make it look like it's no longer blurry or out of focus. So that's the easy one. But again, the specific thing being before we used to have separate software for all this and have to put all this money into it. Now it's just all, everything is all in one here. All right, so for this next one, I know I said we're gonna do five, but I'm gonna combine three and four because we're gonna do multiple things on this one image here. So let's go and open it up. So the first thing I wanna show you is a trick that I actually use a lot. Specifically, I like using it for product stuff. Sometimes I will use it on fashion stuff as well if I want a uh, more vintage look. 
Uh, and I also like using it a lot for my like YouTube thumbnails. And again, you could uh, generalize that into other situations like that. Glow. This is kind of another one of my secret weapons that uh, I feel like not enough people talk about. You can see off the bat what this does. It, it makes it look like we just threw a diffusion filter on there, but not only does it do that, it also does something to the contrast and it just makes it look so satiny and I, I, I don't know, but you guys can see I could crank it up. Obviously I never use it that heavy. Um, you know, that looks like some uh, early 2000s stuff, but when we keep it a little bit lower, you can see the before and after. That image looks kind of flat, let's be honest. It looked great initially, but then once you throw that on, all of a sudden you're like, whoa, like, okay. There's other modes here, we'll go through them real quick. So this is just the normal glow mode. I'll turn that up and down. Um, I usually don't use that one. I usually use the soft focus and the Orton effect. I I'm not sure what that stands for, but uh, I end up using this one a lot. I use this one more for like fashion and portrait stuff because it doesn't mess with the contrast as much. Usually for fashion and portrait work, I don't want my contrast being messed with. Let's do another before and after before. It looked great, but it looks kind of flat. And then we add that and all of a sudden you're like, whoa. And the last one is just the soft one. So, you know, if you wanted a really vintage look, I think this could be very useful. Let's just do the soft focus on here, like that right there. So these next two things are things that I only use every once in a while for mainly product stuff and thumbnails and stuff, but I felt like this would be a cool opportunity to show it off. So this is the neon and glow. Say if we shot this more at night or something like that, I'm just gonna draw a line right across here and you can see that's pretty sick. So again, I use this more, again, for, for thumbnails and product type stuff. I'm gonna try to keep that semi straight there. That's pretty sick. Right down here, we go and we could change the colors on it, make it a little bit more amber to match those lights up top. You can see you can change the whiteness on it as well. I'm gonna feather it a little bit right there so we can make it really bright. That's sick. You can imagine for like headlights and stuff like that, that would be super useful. And then the atmosphere kind of just blooms it out a little bit. So I'll just keep it right there. And then amount, obviously you wanna turn it down and keep it more subtle. So again, imagine this was nighttime, guys. This is this is not the type scenario, I think, to be using this. I mean, I think you could, but that's the neon look there. There's the before, here's the after. Again, imagine it's nighttime, there's already a light there, or uh, you're trying to enhance the neon more. Like, there's a million different things that you could do with that. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show off here, one, the matte. I will actually use this a lot. There's sometimes in fashion uh, shoots that I do where I wanted to give it like a, a 90s paper magazine print type look. So I will use the matte. And on top of that, I would add the film grain on top of there. Now you guys just saw it. First we went and did the glow, then we did the neon, then we did the matte, then we did the film grain. There's the before, there's the after. All right guys, now for the final AI trick here. This is something that I've been doing again, literally for a decade now. I think it's the number one reason why when people go and comment on uh, my photography on Instagram asking, was this shot a medium format where, you know, it could have been shot with the APS-C camera or full frame, like whatever, that it's medium format because of this one trick here. So it's nothing fancy, but it's something that I used to have to do in Photoshop all by myself. And I'd have to go and make masks and do all these tricks and now, I just have it here, atmosphere. So going back to, you know, how the sky did atmosphere and blah, blah, blah. The trick to this is it's creating layers. So my subject's black points will be closer to true black, where the background will kind of haze out because that's kind of how, uh, you know, mother nature is. So are you guys ready? I'm gonna just turn this up. Look at that. It immediately looks like we're in some foggy, uh, Colorado landscape and not just a freezing cold, stark, stilly blue uh, Colorado landscape. Um, you can see obviously it's kind of ghosting around her a little bit so we can increase the depth all the way. We get the full image. We could turn it down to where you can see the dog in front of her doesn't have it as much or we could just keep turning it down so it's literally just, you know, over the mountain. Now it gets even more fun here. Say if we just wanted to put that over the lake. Let's go over layered fog. Let's increase our depth, boom. You can see instead of it putting it out in the background, it almost looks like there's a fog coming off the lake behind her. This is like little tricks that just really take your images to the next step there. It's what really gives you that more cinematic look. In every movie that we watch, there's haze being used. The most epic shots I've ever taken, like on fashion shoots and portrait work, is when it's like there's haze in the background, whether that's dust, dirt, actual fog, mist, whatever it is. But let's do before and after. So that's the layered fog. Let's go in the mist here. So you see the mist is like a more heavier fog right there. So I like that as well. 
Let's go to the haze. The haze does something similar to the layered fog, but you can see, I feel like it fits this image a little bit better, but let's just go back to fog here. And I think this is the one that we're gonna rock with. Again, just because it goes to 100 does not mean you need to use that 100. I like keeping things very subtle. So we're gonna keep it right there. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start ending the rest of the image here. I use that haze tool for desert shots, mountain shots, morning, sunsets, dusk, dawn, like whenever it is, I use it a lot. Um, this landscape tool as well, I use sometimes. Again, it was like stilly blue that morning. Now let's go to the water enhancement because really all the green and yellows in the image is bouncing off that water um, and it's making it look green. So let's just do this and you're gonna see it's somehow the AI knows there's a, a little pond behind her and we could go and we could fix that right there. Let's make it more blue. Let's turn down the amount. See everything that I do in Luminar, I turn it all the way up to see what it's doing and then I go and I turn it all the way off and then I gradually bring it back up until I figure out where I want it. Let's go in the color because again, I feel like the greens is really just getting everywhere. Let's go right there. I'm gonna go to the yellows. I want to make them more fall looking like they were in real life. Let's do that. Then I'm going to go to our luminance and I'm going to, there we go. I like that right there. Let's go to our saturation. Let's boost those yellows. This is looking good guys. I am <laughs> okay. I'm digging this. Go to our develop real quick. Let's do a little bit of smart contrast. Oh yeah. That's what we needed. Now let's go to our matte, cause I think this uh, shot will look cool with a little bit of matteness on there. Yep, look at that. Let's go into the, the portrait tools real quick. I'm gonna increase the face light just a hair, about right there. Real quick, I'm gonna go into color harmony. Again, a tool like this, you would have to go in Photoshop and you know select all the different RGB channels and all the different hues and then go in and like adjust them all. Now there's tools like this that kind of just does it all for us there. We're gonna do split color warm. Basically it's going in all the warm tones and I'm pushing them a little bit more like orangey and all the cool tones and pushing them a little bit more towards till. Again, these were really like advanced professional type things that you would have to do in Photoshop. Last thing I'm gonna do to finish this uh, photo off here, I'm just gonna go and lower the saturation. You guys ready for this before and after? This is before, that's after. That is crazy. That's insane. So pretty cool stuff. I don't know about you guys, but again, that would have took me hours to do in Photoshop. It's like, that was the vision I had for it. And I was easily just, you know, handful of different tools, some bars, and it was done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is like all stuff that I've been using, stuff that I've been doing for like the past 10 years of Photoshop. And now I just easily do it, get it done. I don't know about you guys. I have severe, like really bad ADHD and uh, just, you know, Luminar, Neo, making this more fun and easy to do. It's just, it, it, it takes the uh, stress out of it for me. So I'm pretty sure Luminar is doing a Black Friday sale. I'll put the information down below, but if you're watching this after Black Friday, I'll be sure I'll have a link in there that will give you some kind of a discount code. If you have any questions or if you need any advice when it comes to using this or uh, other tricks, put them down in the comments. Uh, I try to keep up on replying to everybody. And yeah, hope you guys have a good one. Peace.